So on the base of the sweet will of Gurudev, we will continue searching for quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita. In Shishi Radharasa Sudha Nidhi, we came up to verse number 135. And because we ended here last time, we will also start here. Just for remembrance, it was about Adarera Guna Iha Sop Shancharilo. Chaitanya Charit Amrita quote. It's about the drink. So there are different understandings of that nectar and the nectar drink. So first we have the quote here and now we can read the commentary to understand what Srila Anandadas Babaji is uh, quoting for this topic. Shishirada Madhava's delicious service, a commentary. Sri Yugala is now tired of lovemaking and the maidservant enters the kunsha to begin her service. The loving couple sits up in the bed, breathing deeply, their bodies moist with perspiration. The maidservant starts fanning them with a palm leaf fan wanting to remove their fatigue by causing their bodily fragrance to enter into each other's nostrils. Sometimes she fans in such a way that Sri Radhika's scarf slips off slightly, making her Nagara very eager to enjoy her again. Blessed is this maidservant that she can make always relish Sri Radhika's sweet form and fragrance simply by fanning her. The sweat drops of the loving couple have now dried up, so the maid servant wipes their faces with a cloth drenched in scented water and serves them water mixed with delicious camphor. Suswadu Ampumritam means delicious nectar water. Water is also called nectar. Why then is there a separate mentioning of the word nectar required? Srimati hands Sham Sundara the glass with camphor syrup and Sham Sundara takes it, relishing its fragrance that was caused by the scent of Priyachi's lotus like mouth. When Srimati sees this, she smiles slightly making nectar. That is millions of times more delicious than the camphor syrup trickled from her mouth. Sham takes that nectar with the cups of his lips, means he kisses her. Srimati casts a loving glance at Sham's face takes the glass from his hands and personally makes Sham drink the syrup which is mixed with the nectar. 
Srimati closes her eyes out of ecstasy. Sripa does not know whether Srimati relishes the nectar drink or whether she directly relishes the taste of Krishna's lips. Since all the qualities of his lips have been infused in the drink. And here is the quote we heard. Atarera guna iha so sancharila. So there are different kind of understandings of nectar. And I just remember when Gurudev is talking about wine and the wine and honey wine. So this honey wine is also the highest nectar. So it depends from which ankle we want to see that nectar. Actually, it's also a wonderful nectar service. How the maidservant actually is taking the fatigue of Radharani and her beloved. We may think fatigue can be taken by cool air and some drink. Yes, that's one level we can understand. But it's very interesting that there are more levels. What actually is this Kinkiri doing? And Srila Ananda Das Babaji is giving very nice hints. Their fatigue removing by putting the bodily fragrance into each other's nostrils. This is taking fatigue. Why? Because it brings them again in the deep desire to make love again. So this is taking away the fatigue by giving the nectar of each other's lips. This is taking away the fatigue. It makes everything fresh again. It renews the desires. And it gives fire again to their desires. So what kind of expert service is done here? It's not just camphor and water. It's Atarera Guna Iha Sop Sancharila. This is the quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's pure nectar exchanged from the lips. And who is making it possible? The kinkari. What a seva. What a blessed seva. Maybe someone wants to share on that or correct me or give me a deeper understanding like Gurudev maybe or Soniti or others. if we cannot hear you, unfortunately. Maybe now.
now? No. No. Maybe the mic is off. Hello? Yeah, now we can hear you. Beautiful, very nice to explain me. I have no words to explain more higher than you. So beautiful. I am so proud of you. More, more. You see, I am expanding about your Adharya. I never forget your classes. You bring us so deep. This is just your mercy, Gurudev. You are talking to this useless mouth, to this no, no. useless person. You are special. You are worth going back to us. Yes, I'm especially useless, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we are useless that we cannot understand. So if if anyone if anyone does uh, to want to share some feelings or some has some questions or commentaries please come forward it's always nice to to share broader and have your feelings also and please don't think you need some eloquence or some other things for that no really not we need to hear about your feelings. This makes everything more sweet. Why Radharani and Krishna are taking the kinkaris inside? Because it makes it more sweet. The whole exchange gets more sweet. So in this sense we should actually share all together and make everything more sweet. And also because they need somebody to take care of them. Because they lost themselves in each other. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Come, come in the front. Radhe? Radhe? Yes. It's King Kori, Manja, King Kori Devi Dasi. I feel that Rata and Mohan, they need the King Kori's inside because they need somebody to take care of them because they forget themselves in the onion, so they need somebody to take the responsibility to take care of them. Yes, a wonderful point. Otherwise, they could not let themselves completely fall into the Rasa Leela. That's a very important point. So the next quote I found from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Radharasa Suranidhi is in verse number 136. In the Germany. Sri Rata, the great mysterious ocean is it called and that we can get into the topic i will read the verse also all glories to shri radha who is the sinit of rasa from whose every limb blazing amorous nectarian rasa is flowing who is the only ocean that is filled with love? Who is the only nectar ocean of elegance? Lavanya. 
who is an ocean containing the essence of motherly compassion, who is the birthplace of a kingdom of newly entering youthful sweetness, and who is a great ocean of mysteries. Wow, what a description of our Swamini. Sri Pat sees Sri Rata as a great mysterious ocean. Although it is shoreless, it is nevertheless hidden. That's a wonderful description, isn't it? An ocean of mysteries. But not only for Sripad. The interesting thing is, even the master of all mystics, you can call Mohan or Krishna like that, isn't it? He knows all the yoga paths, he knows all the mystic paths, he is the master of all mystics. But even he is completely mysterized by Sri Radha. My God! Sri Radha. He can not understand that ocean of mystery. And her qualities, although they are so broad, so wonderful, and so endless, like right. oceans with no shore, although it is the fact, still all these qualities, these mysteries, are hidden. That's wonderful, isn't it? And this feeling actually is also expressed by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in Chaitanya Charit Amrita when he says that actually we should not speak about this. It shouldn't be spoken officially about that, about this Rasa Leela. But fortunately, The people who are more in ignorance, they will not understand anything. So it will be not seen by them. In this way, he's so happy to talk about this and share all this with the devotees who may understand. In this way, it's an open mystic. Like Chaitanya Charit Amrita itself, it's an open mystic. All the Leelas are inside, Manjari Bhav is inside. It's actually not, nothing else than Manjari Bhav described nicely. But who will understand it? Only by the mercy, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati, by the mercy of Srila Raghunata Goswami, by the mercy of Srila Ananda Das Babaji, by the mercy of our Gurudev, by the mercy of a kinkari, we may understand and we will get the emotional hints. Because wow. there's no hints which you can take intellectually. These are hints you can only get in your Sita Deha. And your Sita Deha is a body of spiritual emotions. My God! And by feeding this Sita Deha, it will grow. And the milk of Swamini, like we heard last time, is her Audarya. Good. 
So let's hear again the description from Srila Anandadas Babaji more. Another ocean that meets with the Pacific Ocean of Mahabhav is Puru Kripa Vatsalya Saram Buddhi. The ocean of the essence of great motherly compassion. The only compassionate gift to the conditioned soul, to the conditioned souls in the material world is Brahma or love of God. This is the great treasure and the great gain of mankind. The most fortunate soul can immediately become submerged in the great nectarian ocean of sweetness of Radha and Krishna's love. Simply by once seeing Sri Radhika. And the maidservants are always sprinkled by the waves of Sri Radhika's motherly love. So again, this is a wonderful description actually of Radharani's Audarya. This is the present. In this age, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the mood of Radha, Radharani herself, in that form, comes down, taking care of every soul, sprinkling them with different waves of motherly love. Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, wake up! You are sleeping in the material world. Your Siddhadeya sleeps deeply. Mother is waking us up with her mercy stream, with the nectar, the honey nectar of her qualities. Waking us up, please, child, my little child, my beloved child, come home. Here is the way. It will be shown by Guru Manjari, the whole parampara. The road is there. Just put one feet before the other. She is taking care. Krishna could not do it. He was there before, isn't it? 5,000 years ago, he was there, but what happened? Is It wasn't that wave, it wasn't that tsunami of Brahma he was giving. He was giving all the mystic path, all the yoga path and all, all the knowledge and everything. Yes, he did his best. But he was there without Radha. Radharani's motherly love was not with him directly. But this time, this time Krishna is also there, but actually Radharani is ruling. She is Jai Shri. She is always successful. And she is taking us out here. If we want or not, we will get her full mercy. Sri Radhika sees her maidservants as being non different from her. Is this not motherly love? Does a mother see the baby separated from her? Does she not feel the baby in every moment? 
When the baby has a problem and even the mother don't hear the baby, she feels, I have to go there. There's a deep, deep connection. So we belong to Radha. That's the wonderful point. And we can be so happy that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was bringing us this message and showing us the way how we can go back quickly by just opening our heart for her mercy, getting filled our heart with her Audarya. So Srila Ananda Das Babaji is writing more. There is also a great kingdom in the Pacific Ocean. The very wealthy island of Radhika's newly entering youthful beauty. So that's more interesting for Radharani's lover. And it's also part of her Audarya. She's so graceful to her lover. She's always in the right moment, like some fruit. One moment the fruit is ripe, not before and not after. It gets bad after and before it's hard and not so sweet. So it's tasty in the ripe moment. And Radharani is the tasty fruit in the right moment for her beloved, always. Always fresh, always exactly ripe in that moment. And this is the wonderful aspect of her. And this is actually also very mysterious to her beloved. And not only to her beloved, the other girlfriends of Radharani, they sometimes wonder how it's possible. Just a few moments ago she was playing on the street like a little child and now She's in perfect view and knows all the arts to please her lover to the utmost state of bliss. How it's possible? Because she's the great ocean of mystery. Radhe Gauravani. Radhe, Radhe, nice. Beautiful to listen how you are glorifying our oh, Swamini. And actually, the uh, Gurudev is relishing this, and then we, we all can relish this. This is how the feelings are growing, and also we are sharing our feelings. And I was just always meditating on the first uh, translation that she is that great ocean of mysteries. And and I thought, yeah, what is a mystery? A mystery is something that is hidden. And at the same time, we are, we are very eager to unfold the mystery, to solve the mystery. It's like in a good uh, creamy, you know? <laughs> We are eager to, to, to find out what is the mystery behind all that is happening. So in the spiritual sense, Shimati Radhika is that mystery that not only keeps Krishna very much eager to find out about all her mysteries, but also the Kinkaris, her Darsis, because they want to serve her and they serve her mysterious 
uh, expertise in uh, serving. And when in this first uh, uh, verse, she is ca called the, the birthplace of a kingdom of newly entering youthful sweetness. And then the great ocean of mysteries. So then I thought, yeah, the mother is the birthplace. The mother gives birth. And it's a kingdom of newly entering youthful sweetness. Then I thought, yeah, it's Swamini. She is always new and always fresh and always unexpected beauty comes from her. But then I thought, She's also giving birth to us, all souls who are now ready to take birth in their spiritual identities by the mercy of Sri Radhika flowing through our Guru Parampara. And then that is also creating newly entering youthful sweetness. Because Gurudev is often explaining or sharing with us that what Kinkari Dasi was also saying that the need of the Kinkaris is for them to take care of the divine couple and especially Shimati Radhika. So that they need always newly entering youthful sweetness. So the I think a Kinkari is one of the sweetest things or beings that is existing in the whole creation. Because they are, like we have heard so many times, so innocent and so pure and selfless service. And so, again, we can uh, celebrate here how Shimati Radhika is the birthplace of all of us. She is giving birth to all of the souls who want to enter into the eternal life. And not only any eternal life like in Brahma, not this only like, uh, like say, pass passive state of being without feeling anything. But it is a mystery what she is making the kinkaris do also. Because even the kinkaris will help Radha Mohan, so to say, help and assist. But at the same time, they are guided from within and from the whole being, from their Swamini. The Swamini is guiding them in what to do because the kinkaris are her expansions. So she is giving birth and not only, you know, like a mother, but also like an expert uh, lover and showing the kinkaris how they can support the love of Radha Mohan, how they can enhance the love of Radha Mohan. And therefore, I like this uh, expression and this whole uh, verse is so deep that with every word is a so you know, new meaning come. It's a kingdom. It, the kingdom is big. A kingdom is not a small village. A kingdom is like vast. She is the kingdom of everything. And the newly entering youthful sweetness is her sweetness that is always fresh, but also inviting all the sweet kinkaris in her service. And that is a great mystery how this is happening. And uh, Gurdiv is helping me or us, all of us, how to, you know, become eager for unfolding this mystery again and again in my own life and also see and feel it in the life of my brothers and sisters and especially in the lives of our uh, teachers, of our Acharyas. So that I just want to share because it uh, you inspire me so much with your depth and I thought, my God, this this uh, verse alone, uh, going deep in this verse, is so many nuances of Swamini's qualities and also how her qualities and the Kinkari qualities are, you know, one in the highest sense. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Suniti, thank you so much. So sweet and so deep. Thank you for that wonderful feelings that you share with us. Yes, and actually what you said brought me to the thought that actually the shoreless, shoreless ocean, there's no shore. Who makes that ocean shoreless? 
the kinkeries. Because these are the expansions always, they expand this ocean again and again. So who makes that ocean shoreless? The kinkeries. And this is Swamini's grace, that's her mercy, that we can actually make this ocean bigger and bigger. And this actually is our Darya for us and, of course, for her beloved. Because the ocean of his bliss will grow through the kinkeries. So it's endless mercy, endless taste, endless lavanya. Oceans and oceans are coming together. It's not just one shoreless ocean, no. It's an endless coming together of all kinds of oceans. No wonder that this creates a lot of very big rasa waves. So how happy we are that although, at least in my case, no qualities, not even the slightest, but we can take part. This is the greatness of Radharani's motherly love. Guravani. Yes, Diane. I just want to, during your um, um, description reading, you know, it in one moment uh, I had the feeling that actually nothing else exists in this more but only mercy. <laughs> that only mercy exists actually. Everything else is just something temporary or. And this is also the big mystery, what we said before, because uh, mystery is something what you cannot see, but when you, uh, when mystery are open to you by, mis by, <laughs> by mercy, <laughs> you see that always was there and it will be always forever there. And this is this ocean of mercy, actually. And it's give really such an enthusiasm and hope and just uh, reality this is even not hope reality what's going just now from now <laughs> to eternity so thank you so much very nice very beautiful thank you so much Dianidi this is such an important point you said it's real it's reality yes this is our reality all others are dreaming, not we. They may think, oh, these dreamers. No, they are dreaming a bad dream, horror. But we are in reality. We belong to Radha. We belong to her. That's it. We are the children of her. That's it. It's so natural. We don't have to work to be we cannot do by any sadhana. It's not possible. Our sadhana is just to clean the heart, to accept the reality. But it's real. It's so wonderful that you mentioned this. It's our reality. In our Sita Deha, we are in the reality. And the rest is like a dream. It will go by sooner or later for everyone. So better sooner. <laughs> better soon that we embrace and kiss our Swamini again and get the dew better leaves from her mouth in our mouth. Better earlier than later. 
that we stand our the waterfall of her our daria and open us completely because as you said it is just mercy there's nothing else our qualities are the drops of radharani's mercy this is the only quality we can have her mercy This makes it so wonderful easy. We belong to her and we just accept her mercy and in this way we are with her. And in this way we serve her naturally. And so by serving yeah. I'm so curious how look but butter leaves. I, I don't have experience how look butter leaves after you heard me? Yes. I, I don't know how look butter leaves. Butter leaves. You know something about this? Butter leaves. Yes. How is how look and you have to ask Guru Dev because yes, I never I want to ask you. him. Please go to the explain to us how look but better leaves, please. We cannot hear you, Gurudev. I will show you in ten minutes. Ah. Ten minutes. So then we can meditate how Swamini is giving this jute better leaves in our mouth. Just as there are many enjoyable objects in a wealthy kingdom, there are also many enjoyable items of Radhika's adolescent sweetness in the vast ocean of her body. That's also a wonderful description, isn't it? I mean, it's still material, it's just giving a hint. It's not giving the whole taste of it, but it's giving a start for meditation. Just imagine the biggest kingdom the biggest richness in this kingdom. Radharani's body is for Krishna like that. It's the most valuable kingdom. It has always new richness for him. He cannot find an end to find a new richness in Swamini. How wonderful! Her body is the most rich one because her body is just made out of Mahabhav, Madanakya Mahabhav. She is losing herself up to Brimvaichitya, that she forgets that she is sitting on his lap, crying out for him, My Mohan, where are you? So eager to serve him, but she served him already so much that he is already out of his mind. He forget completely who he is. And why is this so interesting, this point? Because exactly in that mood, in that state of mind, Radharani and Krishna are coming in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to bring us this rasa. Exactly in the highest state 
where they are losing themselves completely in Mahabhav. Completely. They are not just bringing some Mahabhav. They are bringing the most top. This is really mysterious. How they can do? And just see how they are doing. This is so much mysterious. Without Radha, not possible. Without our Swamini, no chance. She can do everything because she will be always successful in all her endeavors. Why? Because there's no endeavor from Radharani which is not made out of Mahabhav. Her body is made of that feelings. That's why she's a kingdom of that wonderful Mahabhav Chintamani's. And she is forming the whole Mahabhav Chintamani. And such a Chinta stone will fulfill all desires. How this could be if she would be not in the same time Chai Shri, always successful? So how lucky we are that this Chintamani stone of Mahabhav came down to give us the most, the highest Mahabhav, Madanakya and Muhanakya, Muhan means separated, means she is searching for Krishna, which is our mood, because we lost our Sambandha. So we have to be first in separation, that we can come together then again. So all these moods in one person, handed, Freely, that's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is our Darya Lila. Undescribable merciful. No one can understand that. How? Krishna cannot understand. <laughs> and he, for him, it's not even possible to feel it completely. That's why it's eternal Leela. He has to come again and again and again and again and to taste the Audarya of Radharani. Gauravani, uh, I'm just uh, <laughs> asking myself, um, uh, does Radharani is conscious of her qualities? Because she's also, everything is top must, so must humble also. And usually humble person, they cannot see their qualities, actually. And I'm wondering, because all, all only Manjari can see these qualities. Because she's always in the Leela, she's not aware. She is not aware of her qualities. She thinks, why actually this boy is loving me so much? There's so many other gopis who have so much good qualities. Why he loves me? I don't understand. And that makes her eager to serve, to give her best. This is the wonderful quality again, because a person who knows the qualities 
is different to a person who thinks that she doesn't have these qualities, but she wants to have these qualities. So she's always endeavoring more, always trying to be better and better. And this is also actually what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling us with the Trinata piece on each and others. So we always try to be as good as possible from us, but we have to be aware everything is just mercy. We do not have any quality to offer. We may get it from Radharani because we try and she is so merciful that she, that she sees our endeavor. And also like a mother in love, my child is endeavoring so much, but the child cannot get up to this platform. So let me lift that child to this platform now. So all this actually we can pack into this nectar which is coming to us. Radharani's mercy is a compilation of so many oceans of good qualities. And we can get all her qualities by her mercy. That's why we want to be the shadow. We want to be there where all the qualities, the, they drop down as nectar, honey nectar. They drop down. They come to us. And we want to serve her lotus feet that she don't have to walk over the petals of Brindavan. She cannot be in any way herded by, by the thorns or anything on the floor in Vrindavan. We want to be there for her protection. And as a shadow, we are always under her lotus feet, between the floor and her lotus feet. We will carry her on, her, on our head, like one prayer we had yesterday also. Let me carry your lotus feet to your beloved. Let me carry you to your beloved. So this is our natural position. When she is going in our bizarre, let us be with her. Let us be the shadow. Let us protect her, help her. And let us be there when she is completely in Brahma Vaichitya. Otherwise, how she can let herself fall in? So without kinkeries, not possible. And isn't that a fantastic circle of mercy? Without a kinkery, she cannot let herself fall. And she is bringing it as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to us first to inspire us come back i need you i need your service where are you i want to go out on abisa so start your abisa abidea
the word Mahanidhi. Open, open. Ah, here it is. These are the better leaves. Thank you, Gurudev. Wow. I'm mean, curious also, how is the taste? Is it sweet? After Radharani, touch this, everything is sweet, I think so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Guru Manjari is sometimes also giving jute betel leaves to other smaller manjaris from mouth to mouth. If yes, I would. If yes, I would stand in the line. So the word Mahanidi can mean great jewel or great ocean. In this case, it is a Virod Halankara, a metaphor who of contradiction. Gangate Kamala Janme Sabara Subodha Kamale Gangara Janma Anjanta Virodha Iha Vishnu Padapatme Gangara Utpati Virodha Lankara Iha Maha Chamatkriti. This is the quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, Chapter 16. Everyone knows that lotus flowers are born from the Ganga. But the Ganga is born from a lotus is highly contradictory. Isn't it? <laughs> so we can easily understand that on the Ganga there are lotus flowers and they are born from the Ganga. But how is it that the Ganga actually is giving birth, uh, that the lotus flower is giving birth to the Ganga? Radhavani, oh, can you hear us? Yes. We lost you the last five minutes. Can you please repeat? It would be very nice. Of course. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. The word Mahanidi can, me, can make the word Mahanidi ah, can mean great jewel or great ocean. In this case, it is a Virod Alankara, a metaphor of contradiction. Gangate Kamala Janme Sabara Shubhodha Kamale Gangara Janma Anja Virodha Iha Vishnu Pada Padme Gangara Utpati Virodha Lankara Iha Maha Chamat Kriti Chaitanya Charit Amrita Atilila Chapter 16 Everyone knows that lotus flowers are born from the Ganga. But that the Ganga is born from a lotus is highly contradictory. Now the Ganga is born from the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. This is a highly astonishing ornament of contradiction.
Everyone knows that jewels come from the ocean. But in this case, the great oceans of Radha's nectarian amorous love, her nectarian beauty, her great mercy and her motherly love come from the great hidden jewel of Sri Radha's form. She is the great indescribable and supreme jewel of love. Actually, very wonderful description also here. <laughs> Because actually Radharani has all these contradictions also in herself. Like it is said, usually a wine is holding herself on a tree and grows, isn't it? It needs some hold. But in Radharani's case, the wine, the golden wine around the black tamal, is holding the tree. Because without the golden wine, the tree would collapse. So Radharani is full of contradictions. And this is just one merciful, nicely described point. She is the great, indescribable and supreme jewel of love. Not just a jewel, a Chintamani gem. wish fulfilling all wishes and we can imagine that a person like Mohan he is not just an ordinary person if he has some wishes I mean after all we hear that he is self-satisfied isn't it so he has no wishes. So if there are some, they must be very extraordinary, isn't it? First of all, it is said only by Radharani's mercy he can have wishes, because only when he sees her, he gets some of these wishes. And only she can fulfill them. But she is fulfilling them that he could never expect how she is fulfilling. That is also mystic, isn't it? How you get a person who is self-satisfied to that point that he starts to wish himself something? By giving him something more. Ah, that's a wonderful point, Dianidi. You give him something he never tasted before. So even though he is completely self-satisfied, he's tasting something he never had tasted. And now he's greedy. 
Now he wants more. But now he gets so much that he could not even imagine. And he drops. And then Kinkery has to come and bring him back. Back to his stable mind. Isn't that mysterious? Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Can you hear me? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? You can hear me? Radhe Radhe? Yes. Yes, perfectly. Yes. I have one feeling and confusion. Please uh, uh, answer me. Is really Krishna self satisfied? Satisfied? Is really? Because if love is Radha, is is in the in she's Lavini Shakti. Um, Krishna is not complete in himself. Something is missing. So my feeling is not complete in himself. If I'm wrong, I don't understand really. Please, <laughs> now I'm confused. <laughs> I think you perfectly understand, but it's a very nice question because it's describing different moods. As God, he is full, completely satisfied, and he is always with Ladini Shakti. But actually they split to enjoy this Rasa Lila. And in this moment, he is not anymore self-satisfied because in Rasa Lila, it would be disturbing if he would be completely self-satisfied. So only by splitting themselves, so one soul becomes in two bodies, they can exchange their ecstasies. So in this moment, of course, Krishna has to lose his self-satisfaction. Then he is not God in that moment. So we, we can say in this, in, in Madhurya Rasa, in this platform, is not complete in herself. In Madhurya Rasa, he is actually uh, full of wishes and oh, not it. full of needs. He actually is lusty, it is even said, lusty. He has lusty desires. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful question. And this is the mystical thing also in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because actually first they are one soul, then they split to be in Lila Ras, but now they come again you may say as one soul in one body, but no, actually they stay in that mood that there are two persons and come again in one person. And this is completely mystic and mysterious Be because they have still this lila ras with them. And they actually also have the mood of a kinkery inside. So actually three persons in one body. Isn't that astonishing? For our sake.
because Krishna, full satisfied, he was there already. Could he help us? Could he call the Kinkaris and Mandaris and all the other souls in other rasas home? Without giving the taste, the right taste, it's not possible. If you want to get a fish, you have to have the right, how you say, köder? Hook, have, maybe. Huh? Hook, the right hook to get him, right? So if you want to get the kinkeries, you have to have the right hook for them also. You have to come with the highest rasa, the highest taste. And this was Prabhupada always giving. He was saying, we give the highest taste, right? Higher taste. The restaurants of the Hare Krishnas, they have the name higher taste. So actually he wanted to give the higher taste and he said, stay high forever. Yes, this was actually the base he want to give us. But isn't that mysterious in itself? They come as one person, but actually they are not in the mood of one person. They are still in the mood that they are separated. So much so, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in, is, is losing his completely transcendental body form. He is losing his form. Sometimes like a turtle, sometimes completely the arm very long and all the parts of his body completely stretched out, unformed. Very mysterious. So this is only possible when the Chintamani stone is with him. The Chintamani stone of Rasa. Yes, he is Rasa Vaisaha. But what is the need of Rasa Vaisaha if there is not the source of all Rasa? Then empty. If there would be no Radha Kund, there would be no Shyama Kund. And Gurudev explained it so nicely that Radha Kund is always giving water to Shyamakund. Radhakund is the source. And Shyamakund is beholding that, that rasa coming to him, flowing to him. But without Radhakund, what's the use of ras rasa vaisaha? So only through the mercy of our Swamini, we can go back home. Because only then there's some inspiration, there's some, some sugar before our nose, a honey drop we want to follow. <laughs> Without that taste, who wants to follow? Who wants to follow the four regulative principles only? Who wants to follow just principles, religious principles and all this? Try. Who wants? For how long? We saw in practice. We need to have this taste. And this taste is the milk of Mahabhav which is coming from Mahabhav Chintamani. 
the Audarya of Radharani coming to us. This is our food. And this is actually giving us the strength. Rati is included. It will grow. So we need this connection in this paradigm. Sorry? We have to grow our Rati. We practice only to leave the Rati. Because it will bring me to Kama Deva. You said to grow the Rati. No, no, I said it will come by the mercy, the Rati also. It's included in the milk. My God. You reverse teaching of Bhaji Bhakti. <laughs> you are teaching just opposite to the Bhaji principle. I did not understand. There was some interruption. You are teaching against Bhaji Bhakti. Against Bhaji Bhakti, yes. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fallen soul. I cannot teach for Vaidhi Bhakti because this is actually over. It's long time ago. <coughs> but I'm not yeah. saying it's it's wrong. I'm just Rati. saying Rati is the Kamadeva's wife. And we know that all this is included in Radharani. So when Radharani is giving us mercy, Rati is with us with us automatically, isn't it, Gurudev? Right. <laughs> that Rati we need. Wow. What a beautiful thing. So we do not need anything external, outside of Radha. Outside of Radharani's mercy, nothing exists. Not even Krishna. You are talking about Badi, Rati and Kamdeva. Not exist there. <laughs> <laughs> Kama, Kama Deva is following always the highest Rati. Rati means love, means Prema. So who is the highest Rati? Beautiful. This is my God one. Yes, I'm yours. Otherwise, this mouth would shut up. <laughs> Special. This is God one. Yeah. If you wouldn't be mine, and I wouldn't be yours. How could I talk? Your mercy, you give me so much love when I come close to you. This is just that you see your own love in the mirror. What we see in others is inside of us. So your prema you see in me, although this it's not there. But by seeing it in me, you are giving me the mercy and then it will come. Yeah. That's also mysterious. Beautiful. 
दिस इज मंजरी लुकिंग फीलिंग where we can live in this world and this god of any gurudev he fill us always with the great enthusiasm wow this is god of any what is coming from his mouth is god of any you understand he is giving the mercy and when he is saying it like this it has to happen like this this is guru mandri because whatever the mandri say is the will of radha and she is jai shri she is always successful so even the most dull person can be used by radharani's mercy otherwise the kripa path wouldn't work isn't it wow yeah. if you touch a useless thing but by your power and grace it will work out fine then it works even the most useless thing like me touched by that chintamani stone will work out by the time not because of any quali qualification no by mercy yeah. and the mercy comes through guru mantra parampara it's like a, how you say trishta in english oh huh? funnel funnel yeah something like this the mercy is coming and guru mantri is the front the smallest because it has to go in a very very small hole us <laughs> put in and all the power is coming the stream is coming inside even if you put something which a small hole under a big stream doesn't mean that will come in a lot maybe some drop you try it sometime a bottle with a very very small opening you put under a stream but it it will not be filled it goes <laughs> But if you take this funnel, everything is going inside. Whoop! So in this way, it comes down to us through the parampara, and because Chai Shri's mercy is always successful, because she's Chai Shri. <laughs> even the most useless persons will change this is also mysterious isn't it so this is the mystery of the greatness of the mercy of the lavanya of the motherly love and so on from our swamini somehow or other we came in this wonderful situation and this is the only natural situation what we are realized now 
Dayanidhi, this is such a wonderful point you made again. It's so natural. Because a baby always belongs to the mother. It's the most natural thing, isn't it? We belong to her. That's it. Sometimes we may think, Ah, me and Swamini, oh my God, such a long distance and oh my God, I will never reach it. No, the baby belongs to the mother. That's it. It's completely natural. And like Gurudev always say, if the baby is in pipi und kak and kaka or clean, doesn't it, it does the mother doesn't care. It's the baby. She loves her baby. So we are always loved under any circumstances. It is just that we we have to have a little will to open up again for this relationship. And then our heart will be flooded. It will be cleaned. And the more clean it is, the more Rati can come inside. And the little will is our bhajan. We show by our bhajan. Chant a little, like little children. We do a little. We show that we want. The qualification comes from the mother. We just have to show we want. I want to ride bicycle, but I cannot. No problem, my child. I will show you. And if I cannot show you personally, I will send the father or someone else. So Ananga Manjuri is with us here. She's showing us everything. Swamini herself, we know where she is always, but in the same time she is always with us in the form of Ananga Mandri. Ananga Mandri is non different from Radha. We should not think that there's anything different. She is Radha as Ananga Mandri. She cannot leave her children even a moment. That's why Nita is so merciful. Nita is Anangamandri. And he is in every atom. He is in us, around us, with us. Knows every thought, every feeling, everything about us, more than we. Isn't she capable to help us? In all aspects. Happy day, happy day, oh, what a happy day, happy day. 
when Chaitanya came. <laughs> So Panchatattva came here to help us, stretched out arms. Come, children, come in my arms. I'm here to help you in any way. And again, she's by Sri. She's always successful. So if you think you cannot do it, That's definitely false ego. Because the manjari, the real ego, says just, Mama! <laughs> so if you say, I cannot do it, this is too high, like Gurudev always, <laughs> telling us, then you don't want. False ego is telling, no, please leave me alone. <laughs> I have to do something here in this material world. <laughs> don't disturb me with such elevated things. Let me be in religion because then I can get something from God. But if you read with that, if you were in this position already, that you were praying to God for all these six opulences, but you're, you're really through it, if you just want love and nothing else, then Radharani is the best source, the only source. And then all the other things are gone. And because it's so natural, now you don't have to do so much. You don't have to do, you don't have to endeavor. No, you just stay at your mind. I want to go back to my beloved mother and then go in rasa, and then serve her in the rasa. Then I will forget that she is my mother, because we are not in that rasa. But first of all, we have to accept her as our mother, go back, and then play with her in, all, in, in that rasa we want. It's so natural most natural thing ever. <coughs> so by the mercy of Gurudev, because he's giving us this very, very simple... I, I just read again Prabhupada's Lilamrita, some stories about him, and it's so inspiring, and it, it remembers me, he was coming from Bindavan and was dealing with hippies in such a natural way, so astonishing. And Gurudev is coming from Bindavan, involved in the highest Lila Rasa, coming to the Western countries. And what he's speaking, he's speaking to little children in the crown school, or even before kindergarten. <laughs> and he's explaining it in this kind of words, very simple, that everyone can understand. In the way he's speaking about Jesus, for example, that we can understand. And because it's so natural, we understand, more or less, by the time, <laughs> step by step. Mm. 
Because Gurudev is taking care like the mother. Father is also there included, but more like the mother. <coughs> Prabhupada was more in the mood of the father in the East Bowery's and like this, but also, of course, motherly love. But he immediately said, you have to do this and that. You have to follow these rules and that. But actually, Gurudev, he's not asking for anything. Did he ask you to chant some rounds, 16 rounds or something? Me not. I know he's not asking. He's just giving the mercy. This is motherly love, actually. Just giving the mercy without asking anything. So this is our great situation. We are swimming in the ocean of Radharani's mercy. Making up. So, and if we just stay there by again and again sharing our feelings and journeying the ocean of these topics here, journeying it again and again and come to more and more enlightenments little by little, by the time we will actually just be delivered. We will be delivered at the place, at the right place, the shadow of Swamini's lotus feet. But we have to stay there. Like Gurudev also is giving the example, if you are flying to India from Frankfurt, you just have to put your seat and you have to stay at your seat and you will come there, isn't it? Not much to do. Find your seat, sit down, relax, even eat something, have a good time and you will be delivered, isn't it? Taxi drivers coming, pick you up in Delhi, bring you directly in inside of the Mungya Mandir, isn't it? Not so much to do, isn't it? Like this is the path in Radhasya, so natural. But we have to stay. This is our bhajan. Not put our mind again in some other things. If it happens so, then turn again. Turn back again. Oh, stupid mind. Come on. There's Radha. The only thing we have to do, and if we cannot do it ourselves, Gurudev, Gurudev, I'm in trouble. Please, please help me. Gurudev, blessing, blessing. And then stupid mind comes back again. Oh, what I did. Oh, I should chant again and call Gurudev and be with all these Radhadasyams. Okay, good, very good. That's not so troublesome, isn't it? Still enough to do, because stupid mind is there. But it's... It's makeable, isn't it? Much more than to be a pure Brahmin, read all the scriptures and whatever, you know, this way to Krishna. So we have the easier way and we have a loving mother with us. So we can be at, at ease in one way 
we are already under her shelter. But we have to be careful that we stay on the path. That's it. Stay in the shadow. And this is actually what we have here. These sharings are the shadow, isn't it? This is Brindavan connection. The shadow of Brindavan even in the Western world. You just have to make click. Ah, here they are. Rade, rade. This is Sankirtan, no? Brihad, Brihad, Brihad. Yes. <laughs> Even more Brihad. Yes. <laughs> this is Nita's mercy, that this technique is there. Uh, Goranga, are you saying something? Or because I cannot hear you, there's no micro. Gora, Gora Sundara? Jai Shirade, it's so nice Jai to Jai Shirade. So, we have so many nice sharings now, every day. And uh, I said to Suniti, it's so nice to share the different moods of different devotees. So we get a uh, different uh, point of view. Or flavors, no? Flavors. Mm. And uh, every point is uh, is helpful, so that everyone can grow. It's very nice, Gavani. Thank you for your class. Today, one, one group went to Mahanidhi Swami. Oh, yeah. Japanese, huh? Japanese Kishori bring. All uh, from London and from Hong Kong. Mm. Then you. Jai Shri Radhe. Radhe. Dandavat to all. By Gurudeva's mercy, I got a blessing from Mahanidhi Swami. We got blessing. So every day in Kartik time, Mahanidhi Swami kindly giving class in Radha Kunda, 3 p.m. till 4 p.m., one hour. Wow. Yes. And uh, every day he's reading Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, commentary by Anantha Das Babaji Maharaj. Wow. And uh, today he's reading, uh, I forgot the birth number, but uh, this uh, birth, Point is that Shastra is good, but most important is Radha's name. Do you remember Suniti did this uh, verse? <laughs> we, maybe Gorabani Prabhu, do you remember? We respect this Shastra's. But uh, it's like a conclusion of Shastra is Radha's name. This kind of a verse. Then, Mahani Riswami said very interesting things. We learned a lot of Shastras. And one day, if we are going to very deep well, like a hole. And at that time, we need help. Please help me, please help me. Then we start to chant. Oh, I need 64 rounds. Or uh, some rocks. I need to learn Shastra more. Like this. Then one day, Sevia come. Take my hand. Then this devotee says, No, I cannot finish this round. That's why I cannot take hand. Everyone laughing. So Mahani Swami kindly says, Chant Radha's name is the best. And so his point is, uh, another point is very nice, and uh, I remember one thing is, what is uh, spontaneous meditation? He's asking us questions. What is spontaneous meditation? 
So before we are reading shastras, oh, this time, oh, 12 o'clock, then let's meditate, Le- Radha Kunda. Is it spontaneous? No. no. So spontaneous is spontaneous. It's like a mechanical. Uh, spontaneous is not mechanical. Mahani Niswani said this is AI meditation. <coughs> AI. <laughs> AI. AI is a artificial, artificial intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> artificial intelligence. So please do not like this. Then how to do Babaji's are doing? Just reading Lila, listening Lila, Lashkas, then automatically comes. This is a spontaneous meditation. This is a, another point of Ananta Das Baba. He says, Yeah, like this. So, if uh, I, I got recording today, and every day, uh, YouTube distributing this class also, if someone who like uh, inter- who want to listen, but my feeling is honestly. Sadhu Maharaj and Mahanidhi Swami, God is the same. This is uh, like a deep meditation and uh, living in feeling. The their point is the same. It makes uh, our bhajan more strong. It's very helpful. This is my feeling. Rade, rade. <laughs> Yeah, they remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he remember us and uh, we are sitting in front and uh, oh welcome again. Then they gave us prasadam first and give present also. And we are very happy Jamma, and you introduce about Jamma. Yeah, and uh, she she yeah, I introduce her and she's happy. And one devotee, his disciple is come from Sweden. I exchange WhatsApp. One day they will come to our mandir also. They feel our mandir also. This is Sweden devotee before I met you. I will introduce you after. I forgot to take photo. This husband is also a disciple. So he will send. And uh, uh, day after tomorrow is uh, Ekadashi, right? This Ekadashi day, Mahanidhi Swami will do 24 hours bhajan, no sleeping. And uh, he, he is uh, welcome all. If someone who wants to stay 24 hours bhajan, please come like this also. Mm. Very serious. And this is, uh, I feel, this is a uh, dive. I cannot do like this uh, big bhajan. But uh, this, so we are lucky we met this kind of Babaji, English speaker from America to become Radha Kundabasi. America? Isn't it? From, yeah. yeah. It's America. That's why nice to always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gurudev and all by your mercy.